Today I will talk about Cox proportional hazard model. It is basically a multivariate statistical model where the hazard is the dependent variable and there are other one or more independent variables known as covariates and this is my third lecture on survival analysis. This is lecture outline. First I will talk about survival analysis and introduction then about exponential distribution, then Weibull distribution, then Cox proportional hazard model, then very brief about Will Roger phenomena, and time varying covariates, and sample size recommendation for Cox proportional hazard model. And finally, I will provide the Python codes for Cox proportional hazard model and Weibull's survival analysis model. Survival analysis can be done with either a parametric model, non-parametric approach and semi-parametric approach. Parametric approach include Weibull's regression model and non-parametric approach include Cox proportional hazard model. And semi-parametric approach include stratified Cox proportional hazard model. The parametric approach assumes that there is an underlying distribution and the example is Weibull distribution whereas non-parametric approach does not require assumption of a statistical distribution which is underlying the model. So various survival models use one of the following statistical distributions, either exponential distribution, which is most commonly used in memory-less distribution, or a variable distribution, it is most commonly used in engineering and machine failure analysis, whereas exponential distribution is mostly used in biostatistics, other distributions include log normal distribution and log logistics distribution. Although there are well-known methods for estimating unconditional survival distributions, most interesting survival modeling examines the relationship between survival and one or more predictors. As I have told you before, they are known as covariates. Important outputs of survival analysis include median survival time, 5-year survival time, 10-year survival time. These can be estimated from the Kaplan-Meier curve. Then we can also assess the significance of difference in survival curve of two different groups. This is using log rank test and we can examine the effect of covariates in survival by statistical modeling. This is the topic of today's lecture. Then survival function, survival probability at time interval i is given by person survived in time interval i divided by persons at start of time interval i. The survival function is the probability that an observation survives longer than time t. So survival probability till time interval t since start of study is the multiplication of survival probabilities at various time intervals starting from zero. And survival function is equal to 1 minus probability that an individual fails before time t. So s sub t is equal to 1 minus f sub t. The hazard function is the rate of death or failure at an instant t, given that the individual survives up to time t. So hazard function is equal to probability that event happens between t and t plus delta t subject to that event never happened before t divided by delta t. In other words, the hazard function is equal to limit delta t is 0 and this formula. In other words, hazard function is equal to derivative of survival function divided by survival function whereas the first derivative of survival function is the slope of survival curve. This function is also called the instantaneous failure rate or the force of mortality, the hazard function. Hazard ratio is defined as the ratio of the risk of hazard occurring at any given time in one group compared with another group at that very time. So, for example, if capital H123 and small h123 are the hazards at a given time, T123 in group A and B respectively, then hazard ratio at these times are these. So hazard ratio is equal to hazard rate in treatment group divided by hazard rate in control group. And in most 
our models, especially the exponential model and Cox proportional hazard model, we assume that the hazard ratio is constant over time. One interpretation of hazard ratio, if hazard ratio is 1.5, it means that in treatment group, there are 1.5 times chances of death as compared to control group. However, if hazard rate is less than 1, then we subtract as our rate from 1 and multiplied by 100, for example, in this case, 62%. So, in treatment group, there are 62% less chances of death as compared to control group. Then, let us see about distributions, exponential distribution and Weber distribution. So, first exponential distribution. Exponential distribution is a continuous probability distribution. It is used to model variables where small values occur more often than larger values. It is also used to record expected time between events. It is the probability distribution of the time between events in a poison point process. The exponential distribution is also known as negative exponential distribution. This is because of its relationship to the poison process, which is a process where events happen continuously and independently at a constant average rate. It is the continuous analog of geometric distribution. It is a memoryless distribution. So, probability density function of exponential distribution is given by this formula for x more than or equal to 0. And uh, if we said beta is equal to 1 by lambda, then we get the, get the probability density function as this, uh, where beta is the mean of the distribution. So, mean of the distribution is 1 divided by lambda. And cumulative density function is given by this formula. And this is the shape of uh, the exponential distribution given various values of lambda. This I have taken from this side, this figure. Then exponential distribution in survival analysis, uh, it has a constant hazard function which is given by lambda. Thus, a large lambda implies a high risk and a short survival. Conversely, a small lambda indicates a low risk and a long survival. Whereas, reliability, which is same as survival function, is given by this formula. And in machine failures, we usually take lambda is equal to inverse of mean time between machine failures. The exponential distribution is limited in applicability because it has only one parameter, which is lambda, also known as scale parameter. By adding a shape parameter, the distribution becomes more flexible and can fit more kinds of data. The generalization of the exponential distribution to include the shape parameter is the Weber distribution. So, Weber distribution have two parameters, one scale parameter and the other shape parameter. So, there is more flexibility. So, now let us see what is Weber distribution. The probability density function of Weber distribution is given by this formula and cumulative density function by this formula. Whereas, beta is shape parameter and uh, eta is scale or slope parameter. So, these are various probability density functions of Weber distribution given various values of... So, k here is beta. So, if beta is less than 1, there is reduced hazard over time. And whereas if beta is equal to 1, there is constant hazard. And if beta is like between 4, 5, it is like normal distribution. So, this figure I have taken from this side. So, these are various values of beta. If beta is less than 1, there is decreasing failure as we have seen. If beta is equal to 1, there is constant failure and the condition is similar to exponential distribution. If beta is more than 1, there is increasing failure. Uh, for example, in wear out phase of machines, this is important in machine failure. So, if beta is equal to 2, it is same as Rayleigh distribution. If beta is 3 to 4, as we have seen in this example, as beta is 5, it is similar to normal distribution. If beta is more than 10, it is like smaller extreme value distribution. This is the uh, characteristic bath tub failure rate. This is applicable in case of machine learning. So, initially there is infant mortality failure. There is decreasing failure rate. Most of the failures are detected early. These are the manufacturing defects. Then there is constant failure rate, which is the most part of the machine life. Then there is 
increasing failure rate that is wear out phase of the machines so this is very important for machine failures and machine management this figure i have taken from this side so variable regression in survival analysis the survival function is given by this formula the hazard function is given by this formula and we estimate the eta values here so eta is inverse related to hazard function this is very important because the uh, the parameters which we get they are the inverse of parameters which we get in the cox proportional hazard model so this is the difference between variables and cox proportional hazard model and is estimated by log likelihood method or newton reption method then cox proportional hazard model Cox proportional hazard model enables us to test the effect of the independent variables on survival times of different groups of patients. It is like multiple regression model. Hazard is nothing but the dependent variable in this. And unlike log rank test, the Cox, this is Cox regression, there can be multiple predictors and they can be either continuous or binary. So the covariates can be either continuous or binary variable. The assumption of Cox proportional hazard model in, includes status variable which have event and censored are mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive states. So there can be either event or either censored state. Independence of censoring and event. So they should not be related. A similar amount and pattern of censoring in each group. So all the groups should have similar pattern of censoring. Both log rank test and cost proportional hazard model assume the hazard ratio is constant over time this is known as proportional hazard then independence of survival time between distinct individuals in samples so various individuals should have independent survival times they should not be related then the event happens at the time specified so hazard function uh, and hazard ratio in cost proportional hazard model are given by this formula and for one variable hazard ratio is equal to e to the power beta then cox proportional hazard model is very similar to logistic regression only thing is that the intercept is absorbed in the baseline function in cox proportional hazard model so we don't get intercept in the result of cox proportional hazard model because it is absorbed in the baseline and the parameters are estimated using log likelihood method then uh, will rogers phenomena the will roger phenomena is an apparent epidemiological paradox named after a remark made by the humorist will roger about migration during american economic depression in 1930 and in our example of survival analysis it is the effect of change in methods during the study which may actually increase the survival in both the test as well as control group then time varying covariates. So this these uh, this first figure there is proportional hazard. In this figure, the hazard uh, ratio changes over time because of the crossover of the survival curves. And in this also the hazard ratio changes over time. This figure I have taken from this article. So what are the way out? We can compute two different hazard ratios by dividing in two different times. Or we can create a dummy variable with 0 and 1 for two different times and use multiplicative term, which is dummy variable multiplied by group variable. So these are the way out. Or we can do stratified Cox regression. So what about sample size for Cox proportional hazard model? So it depends on the uh, proportion of the positive and negative cases. So if P is the smallest of the proportion of positive cases and negative cases, and k is the number of predictors and sample size is given by 10 times the number of predictors divided by the proportion or 100 whichever is more this is according to this reference now let us see python code so data we have uh, which we have used in the example for python code is originally from rosie et al and uh, it data pertains to 432 convicts who were released from prison in 1970s and who were followed up for one year after release. Half of the released convicts were assigned at random to an experiment treatment in which they were given financial aid and half did not. 
so this study is to see the effect of financial aid on the rearrest of the release prisoners so it has uh, various uh, covariates in the database and uh, so this week is weeks uh, uh, of rearrest this is individual is either arrested or censored this is the final assistance given to the convicts which were released this these are this is the age of convict this is race one for black and zero for otherwise and this prior is t number of prior convictions so this is to see the effect of financial aid given on the rearrest of the prisoners so we load the data by this python code then we uh, plot the kaplan meyer survival curve so this is a survival curve this is the cumulative hazard function and this is the exponential fitting so this was our kaplan meyer hazard which is the actual curve and this is the fitted curve or exponential model both are similar there is slight difference at the start this is the webel uh, fitting webel distribution fitting so this is the fitting curve and this is the original kaplan meyer curve and both are very similar so both exponential and webel distribution is fitting to our data then uh, this is subgroup analysis so we have divided in the database into those prisoners who have given financial aid and those who have not given who were not given financial aid and the p value is borderline significant it is 0.05 so there is difference in the probability of rearrest between the individuals who were given financial assistance as compared to who were not given financial assistance then this is the kaplan meyer plot of both the groups so uh, the chances of rearrest are more for individuals who were not given the financial aid then this is the cox model this is the code python code for cox model and uh, the the things which are the covariates which are significant include uh, this is the p value so a is significant and the number of prior convictions are significant so it is the x e to the power coefficient is 1.1 so e to the power beta for prior conviction is 1.1 with a p value significant it means that who have history of prior conviction have 1.1 chances of rearrest after release and the effect of financial aid is borderline significant is 0.05 this is similar to our analysis of log rank this is webel model and uh, the results that is significant covariates include age prior conviction and borderline financial assistance and the the p values are very similar to those of cox proportional hazard model the difference is that there is intercept in webel model and the uh, the uh, the coefficients they are different the uh, e to the power coefficients are mostly inverse of the cox proportional hazard model so this is all for today thank you very much